Wild Card Weekend indeed lived up to its name. Many wild storylines from the weekend. C.J. Stroud and the young Texans team. The rookie quarterback leading the Texans to their first postseason win. And I don't know how long. They beat the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Housed Joe Flacco, the 38-year-old who was coming off of four straight really good games. Playing out of his mind. And they went into Cleveland and they took care of business. Absolutely dominated Flacco at two pick sixes. That one was over before it began. Then we had that night game on Saturday. Negative five degrees in Kansas City between the Dolphins and the Chiefs. You had to know the Finns are made for Miami. They're not, they're, not, they're not made for that cold. But Mike McDaniel, what he did with the Dolphins, a season overview was outstanding. Tyreek Hill, incredible season. I just thought in that one, they had no shot to beat the Chiefs based on the weather. And based on the fact that the Chiefs had a really down regular season, a lot of people doubted them going into the postseason. You can never count out Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes. Point blank, end of story. Rasheed Rice was outstanding for the Chiefs in that one. Pacheco, pounding the rock. And the Dolphins, honestly, offensively, were just way too predictable. Way too predictable. Far too many attempted screen passes to the running back or to, to Moistert or to one of the wide receivers. Too many checkdowns, and they got blown up every play. It was the most predictable offensive plan I've seen in a postseason game in a long time. Nothing worked. They got that one touchdown, the long touchdown by Hill, in the beginning of the second quarter, and that was all she wrote for them. So that was, that was the Saturday slate. Then Sunday, you had the Lions' first postseason berth. In 31 years. Incredible story. 1991, last time they, they won a postseason game, they beat the Cowboys. You saw the raw emotion. It was Stafford versus Goff, former Lions quarterback versus former Rams quarterback. And it was a brawl. It was a, a gunslinging show between the two quarterbacks throughout that game. It was a tightly knit contest. And the Lions were able to pull it out. They really are. With Dan Campbell at the helm, they are a top dog team. In the NFL, they showed it throughout the regular season, and into the postseason, it's it's carried right through. This is that's a resilient team right there. I mean, the fans bawling their eyes out. You had Slim Shady in the stands watching the game in the press box, and he's a huge Lions fan, obviously, since he's from Detroit. It was a great win for the Lions, and then you had the Green Bay Packers, which I'll get into more thoroughly here because, well, I'm rocking the Jordan Love jersey, and everybody doubted the Packers. Going into this game, outside of the Packer fan base, I don't think anybody believed that the number seven seed Packers could go into Arlington at AT&T Stadium and take down one of the best teams in the NFL. A team that averaged 29.9 points per game. They were 8-0 at home. That was the big statistic. 8-0 at home. Nobody had any faith that they were going to beat the Cowboys in Arlington. And what did they do? They became the first seven seed since the playoff format expanded in 2020 to go in and win a wild card game and advance to the divisional. This team was doubted time and time again since that Tommy Cutlets Giants led since Tommy Cutlets led the Giants to that win over Green Bay. I think it was week 15. People thought it was wraps for Green Bay. They were like, ah, it's a long shot. They still have to have the Rams lose a game or Seattle lose a game, and they still have to win out. They got to beat Minnesota. They went in there. They clobbered Minnesota. They took care of the Bears at Lambeau, 10 straight against Chicago. Then they went into this game and dominated in all facets, all facets. Credit to Aaron Jones, X-Factor for the Packers by far. 21 carries, 118 yards, three touchdowns. He was phenomenal between the tackles. The, uh, speaking of the tackles, the offensive line, they held their own. They were, they were probably the, the biggest focal point of the game because you had Mike, Micah Parsons on the other side. Demarcus Lawrence, guys that could get after the quarterback. Jonathan Hankins, who's normally a great run stuffer. Aaron Jones, Swiss cheese that defense. They were dominant. So the offensive line doesn't get enough credit for blocking and blocking for Jordan Love. Jordan Love, his footwork looked phenomenal. He was making off-platform throws. Love looked like his first postseason start, it didn't even phase him. Th they were on the money. And like I said in my last video, the key to the game was getting pressure on Dak Prescott. They did that. They got in his face. They made him uncomf uncomfortable. And he threw two interceptions, one for a touchdown and the opening, the second drive, the first drive of the game, I believe, for the Cowboys was that Jair Alexander, which was huge to have him in the game. That was that interception, and Green Bay turned that into points. 
Before you know it, after the Darnell Savage pick six, we had a 21-0 lead. I mean, you couldn't have scripted it any better. They played a complete game. CeeDee Lamb, they shut him down. I think he was targeted seven times, had two catches for around 18 yards at the end of the first half. That was the two focal points, getting pressure on Prescott and limiting and trying to contain CeeDee Lamb, who's by far, to me, the best wide receiver in the NFL this season. You can argue that with Tyreek Hill, but... Far and away, CD was a monster. And the, the Packers just kept their foot on the gas. And it was a complete win. It was a dominant win. 48 to 32. You, 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 you love to see it. You love to see it. Then you move on to that night game, uh, which was the, the Rams Lions. And then you move on to Monday. Baker Mayfield led Buccaneers, shocked the Eagles. Eagles had lost four to their last five. Seems like Nick Sirianni lost the locker room somewhere along the way. They looked discombobulated. You had A.J. Brown the night before at some boxing match. He didn't play. Just complete mayhem for the Eagles. And it ended in a dumpster fire with a colossal loss to the Baker Mayfield-led Buccaneers. That was a hell of a win for them. And then the Steelers... At Buffalo, they had to move that game from Saturday to Monday because of one to three feet of snow. In Buffalo, the Bills took care of business. I mean, you knew the Steelers didn't have much of a shot. I mean, Mason Rudolph, first first postseason start. I think it was only his 15th total career start. And Mike Tomlin did a great job with the Steelers with what he had with the quarterback roulette after Pickett went down. He had injuries pretty much all around for the Steelers, and they stayed resilient, and under Tomlin, the guy doesn't get enough credit. He's an outstanding head coach, gets them to the postseason time in and time out, has never had a below 500 year, but they were just no match for Josh Allen, juggernaut. 52-yard touchdown run, oh my. I mean, the second longest run by a quarterback in postseason history next to Colin Kaepernick, and I believe 2012 against Green Bay, but Josh Allen showed... The pressure doesn't face him. He loves the cold. He thrives in the cold. Bills took care of business easily. Khalil Shakir was outstanding, and it looked great. And that was a dominant win. You expected that one. And that wraps up Wild Card Weekend. So it has been phenomenal. It was a great weekend, especially for the Packers. And now we go in, Green Bay does, and play the 49ers in San Fran, the number one seed in the NFC. It's not going to be easy by any stretch. But stay tuned for my keys to winning that game later on in the week as we get closer to game day.